Welcome to our presentation, Simplified IDOC Monitoring with Libelle. I want to introduce myself and introduce the team. My name is Bernd Bayer. I'm a Senior Solution Architect with Libelle. I'm joined by Puneet Kadri. Puneet is a Senior Technical Consultant. We are both located here in our Atlanta office and we're going to walk you the presentation today. So the goal for the uh, webcast today is talking about IDOCs, of course, uh, talking about our IDOC monitoring solutions and also in some aspects about some generic ways of looking at IDOCs. Um, specifically, we want to see how we can consolidate the different T codes where IDOC information spread across into a single overview. We want to show you a different uh, options of filtering IDOCs by message type, IDOC statuses, segments, or even partner numbers. We want to look at drill downs. We want to look at how we can set up email notifications for IDOCs to say if you have a IDOC that fails in a specific distribution center for a specific reason, instead of sorting this out, why not programmatically identify the um, distribution center and send an email directly to the distribution center responsible person. So we're going to look at that. We're also going to look at how to mass update, mass edit, and mass delete IDOCs. And finally, we're going to look at a live demo of our of our software, which is going to be all staying within SAP. Puni is going to drive the live demo. This is a listen-only webcast. If you have questions, please use the Q&A feature. And we're going to see the questions on our, both our screens. And then we can address it either um, during the presentation or at the end in the Q&A session. A brief introduction. Libelle has been um, founded in Stuttgart, Germany in the mid 90s. So we have been around for almost 25 years. We have offices here in Atlanta and we also have an office in, uh, in France. And we have been developing and marketing standard enterprise software since the mid 90s. 80% of our business is carried by the SAP ecosystem. We are heavily focused towards SAP and we are used to work with some of the largest SAP customers worldwide here in the United States, over in Europe. And anybody who has SAP uh, is a potential customer uh, for, for Libelle. We have three main lines of business. Overall, we are and see ourselves as a software company. So we are providing, developing, marketing and uh, supporting standard enterprise software. So we don't really, we can do individual software development, but specifically AD1 is really meant as a standard software. Uh, we have again, three, three main divisions, a data replication division, a system refresh automation division, and the landscape management side, which encompasses uh, data masking, IDOC monitoring. We have a small solution for SAP monitoring. And we're going to talk about lift and shift cloud migrations in another webcast this week on Friday, how we can move large amount of data to Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud, or Azure. But let's dive in specifically in the IDOC monitoring and management. And for that, again, a brief introduction, why we need IDOC monitoring. It's one of those topics that doesn't get too much attention at uh, TechEd or at Sapphire because it's such a topic that has been around forever and it doesn't really seem as important as it is. And if you think about it, however, if your business comes in with IDOCs, your business is directly impacted if an IDOC fails. So if you have millions of IDOCs and if even a handful of them fails, they can have a dramatic impact because there are orders that doesn't get shipped or uh, goods that doesn't get delivered to, to your customers. So they're highly critical. Um, that is why IDOC monitoring is specifically important. The challenges I mentioned somewhat to a certain extent in the introduction, there are multiple T codes where you manage the IDOCs. It's fairly complex and fairly, uh, it's not disorganized, but it's, in a way, it's over-organized, but there's so many places you have to look for the IDOCs. It's difficult to identify a specific issues because you really have to drill down into the specific segments, find the error, and then uh, drill back out and notify the prospective people. And there are also no clear responsibilities. It's really too unstructured of a task um, where 
it comes in perfect to have a software that is structuring the IDOC monitoring. So what, what we provide as Libelle is a software solution. It's an add-on to SAP. It's APA based and it provides this one central screen that is missing in SAP both for the IDOC administrator but also for the end users that end users in SAP have their own interfaces where they can easier access IDOC information and issues easier and drill down easier than it is going through BD87. We don't want to replace any SAP transactions. We want to complement them by providing work lists, by providing smart and intelligent tools to um, help the users and help the administrator managing the IDOCs. Specifically, we want to integrate all the different transactions into one interface. What we basically do in the back end is reading the IDOC, uh, the three core IDOC tables, EDIDC, EDIDD, and EDIDS, where we get all the IDOC information and then present them to you, where you can either go back to the original transactions and, and fix things there, or also update uh, transactions or update information directly in the IDOC monitoring tool. So ADMON collects pretty much everything that is connected to an IDOC and that list can even be expanded. But overall, we have information we are collecting about the specific SAP system. So we have customers, specifically one of our largest IDOC um, customer is in the automotive industry. It's a car manufacturer and he has around 200 SAP systems worldwide and all of those systems have IDOCs and their goal was really to centralize the IDOC monitoring and have a central place where they collect all IDOCs across all the SAP systems. And then the standard information, who created the IDOC, where's the IDOC coming from, is it going in, is it going out, uh, the message type, the sender receiver, IDOC statuses, segment qualifier. Um, we have segment objects or segment values like a plant ID or a distribution center ID, which you want to use for filtering at a later point. And then you can filter by message text, the classification, um, error, or green, yellow, red, error, warning, or okay message. The message class, base types, message numbers, long text, the message variables, which could also indicate a filter or be useful for a filter, and then partner numbers. So this is the base parameters we can want to collect from all the IDOCs, and with that information, you can consolidate it, refine it, filter, present, and then also manage them. There is one central component, which is the IDOC collector, or it's also called the IDOC run program, which you see at the bottom. And this IDOC run program runs as a standard SAP, um, uh, routine SAP job where we say every hour or every two hours or every 15 minutes, we are collecting the IDOC information. And based on the information we collect, we have a rule engine and a reaction engine, and we apply certain rules to say if certain conditions are met, uh, do certain things. And I like to compare it with uh, Outlook email filters. You get an email with a specific date range from a specific person uh, with specific keywords and if that's the case do something with that email of course it's going to be a bit more sophisticated than an email filter but the general idea is the same what's also important is the separation between ADMON core and the ADMON configuration this is not an up up um, uh, a transport which you continuously change every time you make a change to the configuration so the collecting program the rule engine and reaction engine stays the same it's the up up core or ADMON core, and all the rules are configurations inside the SAP um, ADMON tool. And the way it's implemented, the ADMON runs in its own namespace, so we can keep our own tables where we keep the configuration that you don't have to make an up up uh, transport every time you want to change anything. The reactions, we're going to look into more details on the right hand side. We can send emails, we can send uh, SAP mails, and based on certain conditions, we can execute function modules, programs, or SAP events. And then we have two concepts um, one is called a user work list, and one is called uh, user forms. Um, we can add specific IDOCs following a specific uh, condition to 
a specific user to say every user or if there are 10 or 15 users who need to fix iDocs based on the conditions they get the information directly on their own work list so they are gone to SAP they see the 15 iDocs they need to fix and don't have to really search for them. A little bit more information about the iDoc collecting program or the run program. You can set up multiple collecting or run jobs to say I want to run a job for Matmas only or want to run a job for Debmas only. And the point is really we don't want to go back two weeks or three weeks on every run and collect iDocs that have been sitting there for the last three weeks. There might be a job necessary that also collects the iDocs that have been sitting in an error state for three weeks, but this is not a job we want to run every 15 minutes because the job we want to run every 15 minutes is to collect super critical iDocs which can't fail or if they fail they have some dramatic impacts. So you run the collecting program for different message types for different um, areas in different intervals. I want to look into more or present in more details how we apply our rules and reaction engine in uh, three steps as an example. So every hour, as an example, we are collecting IDOCs and then we are continuously applying the rules and these are rules you're setting up. Puneet's going to show that in the live demo. Um, if the conditions are met, trigger the reaction and we say, so we collect MATMAS or DEPMAS in this example if we have an IDOC status 69 inbound with a specific message number, variables, send an email with the IDOC details to the IDOC owner. And we can even include um, objects from the segments directly into the email. They don't even have to go into SAP to figure out what was the specific error message. We can include all of that in the email. This is an example of the email. Again, we can send it out, out of SAP. We can leave this inside SAP. We uh, list the um, multiple IDOCs issues in the same email if it's the same issue. So if you have 100 IDOCs that fail for the same reason, we get one email and then we list the IDOCs in the email. And then you, as you see in the middle, you can uh, include a custom specific, uh, customer specific body to include any segment information or object IDs that are relevant to to you and to your area. The um, different customers have different preferences. A lot like to stay within the SAP ecosystem, so they prefer SAP mails that you don't even have to leave SAP to fix your iDocs, so we do the same and it has a couple of advantages. We can include uh, links directly to our own work lists or our selections um, in order to fix the issue or you can just include links to wherever um, the transaction or whatever transactions you think is appropriate to fix things. So the drill down, I'm going to do this very quick because you're going to see that in the live demo, but basically you log on to the ADMON and then you see all the IDOCs by SAP system. So we have two SAP systems in the screenshot, TA1, TA2, and then you see all the IDOCs that are read. You simply double click and then you see which message type has IDOCs in the respective study. And then if you double click again, for Debmas, you would go into the different IDOC message types, 29, 51, 53. And if you double click again, you can either show the IDOCs um, by detail. So if there are a thousand IDOCs, you double click, you would see a thousand IDOCs. Or there's a second drill down option uh, in, in this fourth step, which shows IDOCs by group. So if there are uh, a thousand IDOCs, but 980 of them failed for the same reason, you would get one line with 980. Um, uh, listed below it and then uh, 19 other lines with the um, other error messages. We provide a couple of features to help you finding IDOCs since we all have, since we now have all the information to go through we can provide a simple IDOC find interface where you search for specific distribution centers you don't really have to go through a couple of hoops within SAP to get to the information because we have all of that already um, sorted out. We have options for the end users to reprocess IDOCs directly from within Edimon. So anything that is um, uh, utilizes batch input, we can simply reprocess in the, in the foreground or in the background that they don't even have to specifically um, go back in the transactions that is required. 
And one of the newer features is the mass change, mass archive, and mass delete filtered IDOCs. This is great for if something is going wrong, but per customer feedback, they told me it's also great for actually doing uh, mass testing that we uh, mass upload IDOCs into a system. Uh, also with the Edimon, is not a standard feature, but you can build it fairly simple around it. Um, once you have the IDOCs filtered, selected, you select multiple IDOCs of the same issue, or of the same type, and then you can mass change segment information. You can um, mass archive and mass delete IDOCs that have been selected. Two more concepts. One is the ADMON worklist, and the other one are the ADMON forms. This is uh, the example where we have users and we don't want them to um, go into BD87 because we know there are only certain fields they should touch. So we put IDOCs that failed into their own user work list or in their own queue. So when they log in, they see the work queue and then they can basically select the IDOC and provide only the values we predefined for them so they can see the values. There's an old value that is likely invalid and a new value they can provide and then they update it from there. The second is the Edimon form, which is basically a new iteration of the IDOC um, work list editor. So the, the idea for both is really to give the users a simplified view on the IDOCs, to give them only the information they need in order to fix things. And the Edimon form is to say, let's reduce the 500 or 800 fields that are potentially available for a single IDOC into maybe 20 that are relevant for the users and give them a form where they can see those 20 fields which they actually need and actually um, um, understand because it can be very complex, very quick. So the rules reaction engine, um, this is basically a function modules you can implement together with us or you can implement by yourself where you say if certain conditions are triggered, you can um, execute a certain program that eventually reprocesses the IDOC uh, directly or anything that is not covered in the software you would like to build yourself. So this is a quick um, introduction from my end and it's much easier to visualize what the tool is doing if, if you look at it. And with that, I wanna pass the presenter role to Puneet and let Puneet uh, show the actual software. So put it, I make you presenter. So I had to confirm that. And uh, it's all yours, Put. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, everyone, for a nice presentation. And uh, hello, everyone. My name is Puneet Katri, and I'm Senior Technical Consultant at Levelle. I'm going to present a live demo of uh, IDOC monitoring tool which is uh, also called Edimon tool, solution provided uh, by Labelle. On my screen, uh, you are seeing this Edimon cockpit. So let me briefly uh, talk a little bit about the installation uh, or implementation of this tool. So uh, this tool is uh, basically an add-on on top of SAP. And uh, the installation is uh, fairly simple where we provide a couple of transports which go into the system where you are going to monitor the IDOCs. And uh, after the imports, we have to do a little bit of customizing uh, based on your requirement and then uh, tool can go live. And the customizing totally depends on the, the range of uh, requirement what you have. So uh, once uh, once the tool is installed and in, uh, in impl implemented in, in uh, one of your SAP system, then uh, this tool can be accessed by a simple transaction, which is uh, called slash develop slash ed1, as you can see in my screen. Uh, once we run this uh, transaction, we reach to this ed1 cockpit. This is a home screen of uh, ed1 tool where which i also call as a central monitoring location where i can monitor the local system as well as uh, external system also in your landscape provided that the tool should be installed on your external system so we can uh, we can have as many as 
uh, system where EDMON tool is installed, but we can make one system as a central monitoring location where you can list all the system and monitor the IDOCs. As you can see in my screen, I have currently two systems listed, TA1 and TA2. TA2 is my local system where um, where I'm monitoring the IDOC and TA1 is the external system where EDMON is installed, but I'm getting the result right here in this central monitoring uh, location. Now, um, this view I can I can have a two different view. One view one is the um, home screen, which is default view. Another one is I can do a display as a list where I can have a list of all the systems which I am currently monitoring listed here with the message type or other IDOC type which we are monitoring um, listed here as, as a list. And another view is displaying as a tree, uh, which is also an SAP standard view where you can monitor or, or view uh, all the IDOCs based on um, as a tree. So we can go back and again back to the home screen. So in the home screen, you can see uh, I have uh, different options on the top. As uh, Bern mentioned earlier, earlier in his uh, presentation that there are two different segments in this tool. One segment is where we are uh, collecting the data for the IDOCs and then uh, sorting out, presenting in the, in the nice way uh, the, the IDOC data and uh, with that you can also add it and process IDOC right here in the one uh, location all the IDOCs and another segment is is uh, creating an automated reaction using the rule which will send you the alerts uh, or send the IDOC in the work list as well as it have the ability to automatically fix the IDOCs provided you already have certain custom reports developed or we can use SAP standard reports to uh, fix the IDOCs automatically using the alert mechanism. Now the first part is to collect the data and to um, collect the data we are having a check program uh, which is available in this drop down menu on the top. Uh, we select the check program EDMON which pop ups uh, a form where we have to fill the details about the data which we have to collect. Um, here in the first section, I can I have to select which system I, I need to run this check program, whether it's external system or it's a local system, which is TA2. I need to fill information about the message type which which for which I have to collect the data. Um, for one check program, I can I can run only for specific message type, but that uh, message for that message type, I can have a range of status status to collect, uh, which I can define. Here, it can be a range, it can be explicitly single values which I can define, or I can exclude certain values, which is uh, totally depends on the requirement of that particular message type and the data which we have to collect. So for example, here I'm putting a range uh, from 04 to 72 uh, status of the, that particular message type I'm collecting the data. And the third section is where I have to define the number of days data I have to collect, uh, whether I, ca I can run it for and collect the data for last day, last complete 24 hours, or I can define an, uh, any specific hour or minute uh, for which I have to collect the data. The last section of this uh, check program is how we reorganize the data which we are collecting. And the way we are collecting the data is we are reading uh, the SAP standard tables, which is EDIDC and all other uh, IDOC tables. We read them and then collect the data from those tables and then put them, put the data in the Libelle uh, specific tables and then present the data in this tool. So those tables, uh, the Libelle specific tables, those comes up with the installation of this tool and those libelle specific tables also we reorganize and maintain uh, based on this check check program so here we can define how long uh, uh, back data we, we we want to keep on those libelle tables and and we can define it here so that those uh, data which can which can be uh, available for your uh, 
your review and uh, it will automatically reorganize or delete the older data of that number of after that number of days so now uh, once i have the the conditions matched here that for which message type i need to collect uh, uh, the data i can run that program in the foreground or as well as i can run this program in the background uh, when we when we uh, do the installation and then when we we have to collect the data we always run this program in the background uh, as an sap standard sap job and with that we have additional functionality to um, to run this program where we can define the exact date and time based on the system uh, available resources as well as we can define the period values now these period values are something which uh, which uh, is the requirement coming from always from the from the customer where uh, we define this period value based on the priority of the message type uh, but we have a range of periods available which is again sap standard functionality where you can define whether you want to collect data every five minute and present the result or you want to collect data hourly or daily uh, depends on on completely on the requirement and then uh, this job can can run periodically inside the SAP system and collect data and represent present the data here in the EDMON tool. Uh, this job uh, we can you can run this job uh, again as I mentioned uh, based on the message type. For if you have a different message type, there will be a different job uh, need to schedule and run on different periodicity and collect uh, that job will collect the data and present the result. So once the this particular job is running in the background, it collects the data and we can see the number of IDOCs uh, data is collected here. And uh, this is an, an overview of uh, uh, IDOC uh, where we, we see the number of IDOCs, which is in the failed status, some of the IDOCs in, in the warning and the other ones are uh, in the green. In this cockpit screen also you can see that we on the top we have a filter mechanism where you can filter it out uh, and 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 see the specific data which is uh, which you want to see as well as on on the right side you can see the the currently the background jobs which is completed inside the sap system and and uh, the overview of that uh, for which current for which message type the jobs are currently running uh, we also have the section here which is called link to transaction is a, a space where you can define your own transactions which which you use for day-to-day -day basis to troubleshoot the IDOC. Uh, for example, here I have these five transactions which I use to troubleshoot and and get more detailed information about the IDOCs in case I, re I require. So I can simply click on, uh, for example, BD87. Uh, it will directly take me to the BD87 transaction. It, you can see that here. Uh, and then I can, I, can, uh, I can check more detail about the IDOC number and go back to the EDMON uh, cockpit again. And this functionality is basically going to reduce your effort of opening a, a different session or navigating to different transaction to save some of your time. Now, once we have the data collected, uh, we can simply double click on that uh, system ID to go inside the system and check the uh, data in more detail. Once I double click, you can see it here. We have a, a list view for that particular system and the message types uh, for which we are collecting the data. So th these are the different message types. Currently, uh, I'm collecting the data for this system, and each message type will have a background job running in the in the in the system which is collecting the data. And uh, periodicity can be different based on the priority of or the criticality of the message type, but the jobs are uh, keep collecting the data and uh, and updating this list here. And I can see here uh, when it was last collected. So the information about the last background job or check program run is also available here. Now, I can again uh, double click here and go inside the specific message type to see what are the different statuses we are collecting. And these are the status uh, which, which again are defined in the check program 
uh, for which we are collecting the data. In case we want to add uh, more status, you can define one more job for same message type, but different status and different period values uh, based on the requirement. So the, these are the uh, uh, the same message type, but different status of the IDOCs which we are collecting. And if I more go into details, for example, status 56, I want to see what are the IDOCs currently in the status 56. Then I can see uh, the specific IDOC numbers and uh, the error message here that why the IDOC is failed. Uh, Right now, this this our system is is in Germany, so you see that language or the error message is in German. Uh, but uh, the, these are the error uh, texts for that particular IDOC. Uh, the IDOC is failed, and uh, now at this point uh, we have uh, the IDOCs uh, which is collected, and here you can see that we have two different statuses. One is the EDMON status and another one is the SAP status. Uh, EDMON status is again the status of the IDOC at that time of the check program collected the data. And SAP status will be the current status of that IDOC inside the SAP system. So there is a possibility that EDMON status and SAP status will not match, but it totally depends on the check program. If the check program is running in uh, every five minutes, then the EDMON status will also uh, get updated every five minutes. But um, the EDMON status is totally depends on the check program at what time uh, this uh, IDOC data was collected and what was the status of that IDOC during that time. Now, uh, from here, I can uh, display the IDOC. I can check the status of IDOC. Uh, simply just select the IDOC, click on display IDOC from this uh, top uh, button. And once I click on this, I will have a different option to display the IDOC. Um, so for example, you can see, you can go traditional way where you can go uh, to BD80. It will directly take you to the BD87 and you can dis display the IDOC. I can display the IDOC in MS Excel sheet and you can download that uh, for your review purpose. Another option is display in a form, and this form uh, you can select in the drop down menu. These all are the forms which are custom created inside this EDMON tool. Uh, and the, 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 the benefit of this displaying IDOC in the form, as Bern also mentioned earlier in his presentation, that it will show you those uh, columns or those values inside the IDOC which is really important to you rather than showing you the complete uh, segments or all the segments inside IDOC. So for example, in, in, in IDOC, if you have um, hundreds of segments and you're only interested to see four or five of the uh, segments for that particular IDOC, then you can develop your own form, uh, custom form, and that form will be available in the drop-down list and uh, you can just simply display the IDOC in that uh, form itself. And then overview IDOC, again, it's a transaction WE19, which is SAP standard transaction, a different view inside SAP where you can display the IDOC. So let me show you how it will look uh, in BD87. If I select the BD87 here and then simply click OK, it will directly take me to the BD87. Um, so uh, when you navigate to BD87 where you have to input the data about the IDOC and then it will take you to this screen. But from EDMON tool, it will pre-fill the data automatically and execute and, and directly come into this screen where you can uh, see the information about that IDOC and, and troubleshoot the error. Let me go back. Uh, when I'm going back, I'm again back to the list where I have all the IDOC mentioned for this space, uh, SAP status. I click on display IDOC. And this time I'm going to show you how it looks like uh, to, to see the IDOC in, in the form. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, I have different forms created for this particular message type. And I select, for example, this one, press OK. And it is going to show me the IDOC in the form and the, the, the segment information 
which I really needed, I will I will see it here. On the top, I have information collected from the EDIDC, which is IDOC number, uh, partner number information, uh, what, what is the direction of this IDOC. These information, I, I'm collecting it again, uh, the header, footer, uh, and the frame information, it's it's all all customizable, customizable. So you can have as many as information uh, in the header from EDIDC table. You can have information in this frame where I have partner information, date inform, date and time information available, as well as the body information, which is the different segments and values. I'm uh, getting the details from the IDOC and showing you here, which will help you to uh, troubleshoot uh, the issue or just to know that what information you have to edit here. And this, this particular area is uh, completely editable. Again, it's up to you um, where you can define which uh, value you have to update in case of this particular IDOC which is failing. And uh, you, can, you can edit the value right here in this screen and then save it. And that, that value will be directly saved inside the IDOC itself. And once the value is updated, you can come to this screen, main screen, and the process, and you process IDOC from here inside the event tool. And again, for you can you have different option whether you want to run it foreground or background and then process the IDOC. So it will ease up your day-to-day um, -day activity where you are going into different transactions and identifying uh, the root cause and then editing the IDOC and then going to different transaction and processing the IDOC. So you have all the info, all information available at one screen. You can edit the IDOC and you can process the IDOC from here. Um, also, uh, we have option available where you can see the status of IDOC, which is going to show you the complete journey of the IDOC when it is it was errored out inside the SAP and and also uh, when it was collected, um, this particular IDOC in EDMON, what is the status and information, date and time in, uh, information, and, uh, and also the information about the username and some, some header information about this IDOC also available on the top. You can uh, click on edit here uh, and then edit the IDOC itself. Uh, we are getting this pop-up right now that this particular IDOC is blacklisted. Uh, we have functionality available in this EDMON tool where you can uh, have an added security of any specific message type and assign that um, and mark that particular IDOC in a blacklist so that only specific group of people or, or only specific user can edit that IDOC uh, not everybody else inside the system can edit this. So this is a, a security mechanism inside this tool, which I'm going to uh, speak uh, later part of this demo. So uh, this is a uh, first part of the IDOC where we collect the data, sort the data in different uh, uh, columns and different, um, different uh, statuses. And then here in this screen where you can edit the IDOC and process the IDOC. Now, after collecting the data, the, the second phase of this IDOC or second important segment of IDOC kicked off, which is called automated reaction. So um, in the first part, you, you manually fix the IDOC and process the IDOC, but in the second part, you can automatically uh, get the alerts uh, while working on other tasks. You don't have, really have to sit in front of this monitoring tool and, and monitor the IDOC. So you can uh, create the rule on, on this type of IDOC and uh, once the conditions are met, you can create the notification. So uh, I, I simply uh, here uh, selected the IDOC and select create rule, which actually pre-filling the information, you can, um, you can go as deep as uh, you want for matching the condition or this can be a, a very generic rule as well. Uh, once, since I collected, uh, since I created uh, or clicked on the create uh, create rule inside this screen, which prefills the data of uh, for this specific IDOC, uh, this in, uh, conditions are prefilled, and I can I can have more conditions um, 
mentioned here, for example, uh, have the segment and field information and the value of that particular uh, field uh, as a condition. Uh, for example, if you have uh, a plant number mentioned inside the IDOC or any specific partner number or the client customer number mentioned in that uh, in the IDOC itself, you can you can also mention those uh, segment and field information here and uh, specify the value. Again, this value can be a range um, available uh, for inside the IDOC uh, and uh, this this rule will will see and match the condition if that particular plant number is matched then it will or trigger the automatic reaction uh, so similarly uh, you can you can have the condition matched from the idoc inside the segment or you can also have uh, uh, conditions of mentioned uh, from the control record which is again edi cvc table where you have some uh, control information inside the IDOC which can be mentioned inside uh, as a condition. So once all these conditions matched, then it will uh, trigger a notification. Uh, in the notification, uh, let me show you the actual uh, rule which is uh, already created inside the system. Uh, I go here select the system display the rule i can have more uh, filter mechanism or i can go as generic that it will show you show me all the rules created for the system ta2 and then execute i'll i'll see the list of all the rules which are created for different error, different uh, message type for example if i select this one i can uh, display the rule here and here you can see the conditions currently defined for message type, matmas, uh, system ID TA2, uh, IDOC status, and the for which direction currently I have for this rule created. And these are the conditions that uh, this the, these are if the message te text say this information, and if uh, the segment uh, have this value inside the IDOC, then it trigger a notification and uh, I, we have different type of notification notification one is email which will directly send an email to this user on your outlook and you will get a notification in email uh, second is sap mail which will send a email inside the sap itself and uh, whenever you log in into the system it will pop up uh, that this, these are the iDocs uh, alerts which you which you get inside the invo inbox of SAP, and then you can uh, go inside uh, SAP inbox mechanism, which is available standard functionality inside SAP, and have a list of all the IDOCs sent to you as an alert. And with that, we can have a linking mechanism where you can directly, uh, where you will have the link available in that email body to go directly inside the edmall work view work queue or the confirmation section these are all uh, uh, different section available inside the edmall tool and the third sec third uh, functionality for notification is the confirmation mail which is again which is inside the edmall uh, and it's again a, a ticketing functionality which automatically creates the tickets inside the edmall tool for your tracking purposes and the, the last part of this notification is uh, sending as a text inside that alert uh, email where you can define or you can customize your own text message for that particular IDOC um, in case you want to add more information for your uh, team. And also in that text, I can, I can get the data from the IDOCs itself for any specific field or the value. I can collect the data here uh, and mention that segment and, and field value and it will automatically uh, get the value inside the IDOC and send you as an email alert in an email body. Now the next next step is uh, uh, once you once you define the notification type which you really want to get as an alert uh, the next type is execution where we have available option where you can trigger a report you can trigger a function module event or job inside the SAP system to automatically fix the IDOC. 
and these programs can be a custom report it can be sap standard report which uh, which automatically change the status of idoc from 56 to 69 for example and the third option is uh, work list is a specific section inside the erimon uh, which is available for your users and uh, here in this work list you can define you can assign this particular idoc or these type of idocs where once the condition is matched uh, this idoc will directly assign to this user which is mentioned here and once that user go inside the work list uh, that user can see the idocs listed which is assigned to that user and also here we can define then the segment and field which you think are important to to troubleshoot or or uh, update the values all those segments can be mentioned here there is no limit uh, to assign this uh, to to define the segment and field information which will be available in in the edit mode where uh, the users can edit the values of those segments in one screen and process the idoc right there from the work list section and the last last tab of this rule creation is the interfaces where you can you can define the external interfaces to um, to have a more alert mechanism for example if you have any third party tool there is a possibility that you can uh, you can integrate that third party tool to send an uh, alert on that uh, that external tool as well as you can define as an interface inside the sap as a ccms alerts so once you have the rule created, it will automatically uh, get triggered uh, in the system once the IDOC is collected by the check program. So these are the two uh, main segments running uh, parallelly. Uh, once we have the IDOC collected, it will automatically uh, trigger the rule and that rule will automatically trigger the notification and we have different notifications. Now, um, I would like to show you the um, the area where users uh, are having their own idoc assigned which is called work list so you we go to the cockpit again the home screen and from here we can access this work list this also have a separate transaction available in case you directly want to go to work list uh, the user can directly um, use that transaction to to access the work list area so once i click here i have to just uh, fill the detail of the user uh, for which I want to see the IDOCs are assigned. Mbloom is the user inside the SAP system for which we have the IDOCs assigned. I put the responsible person information here and then click on uh, details, which, uh, which will give me the list of all the IDOCs available or assigned to that particular user. Now here you can see all these IDOCs listed here. And uh, we ha I have uh, all the functionalities available inside the whatever uh, was available when I drill down to a specific IDOC, uh, like displaying the IDOC. I can display the IDOC in different uh, section, whatever are available. Uh, also, this area is where I can customize the transactions to see that particular IDOC. For, for example, I have MM03 and CAT assigned currently for this IDOC. Uh, let me um, show you once i click on edit idoc so it will pop up me the screen of uh, that particular idoc and these are the segments which i mentioned in the rule where uh, i think that uh, it's important for for that particular user to to uh, troubleshoot it to see the old value of of these uh, fields and i have option to assign the new value right here in this this screen once I update the new value, I can edit and process the IDOC right here from the same screen. So this is going to save a lot of work for the users where they have to update the values inside the IDOC in different segments. So they have all the important segments and value, uh, field values mentioned here in the, in the work list area. Uh, I have different fields, uh, different options available. I can change the status. I can change the responsible person and also Cross the IDOC right here from this from this screen from the work list. Um, now, uh, apart from that, we have different customizing option available in this uh, 
in this tool which will really going to be used useful for for the customer uh, specific customizing where i can customize the email body email subject i can customize um, as i mentioned before uh, the the blacklist where i can define what are the blacklist uh, I, I docs which are really critical and they, you don't want them and that everybody inside the system can can edit those idocs so you can you can mention that those idocs in the blacklist and assign to a specific role who will have the authorization to edit those idocs only subject area is also a specific security feature available here once it's activated you can have two different options of authorizations it can be a user specific or it can be a role based specific where uh, users are assigned to a specific subject area and these subject areas are mapped by message type and uh, here here i can define uh, the subject area and map it with the message type and that subject area is something which you can assign to a specific role or a specific user and only those users are uh, which is assigned um, if the subject area is assigned to that particular user can only see those idocs so let me show you a quick example here if i activate it i want to make it as a user specific and then i go here in the subject area and um, make sure that uh, user specific activate save go here uh, make sure my user is available here assigned to this subject area so this subject area is fi for which my user is assigned. So I can only see those message type which is assigned to that subject area. And here I can see what all are assigned for FI. So I can only see the Debmas or Metmas type of IDOC inside the Edemon cockpit. Uh, so let me save here and go back in the cockpit. And if I double click here, you'll see that I can see only these two specific message type for uh, for me available to see uh, one more thing I, I i forgot to mention that what one also mentioned earlier that we can do the mass update of the idoc so i can uh, i can select all those idocs which i have to do the mass update uh, the only uh, only condition is that that those idocs should should be failed for the same reasons so i can select all those idocs go here on the top drop down and do the idoc mass change where I can put the segment and field information and put the new value for uh, for that particular IDOC and it will update all those IDOCs with the new value. Also I have a condition where old value, if old value is uh, XYZ, put the new value inside the IDOC for any specific cases. Uh, similarly, I can do the mass delete, I can uh, do the mass set the status back to the 68 uh, which is uh, not applicable um, so yeah this is uh, pretty much high level on the edmon tool and um, we, we can go deep down on one-on-one -on -one session if you are more interested and and answer um, more uh, scenario inside which is more applicable to your uh, your landscape or your requirements that's it for my side thank you Vaughn. Thank, Thank you, you Puneet. Let's do a quick uh, summary of the um, topics we covered in the webinar. So thanks again Puneet for the presentation. And I have two things basically uh, looking at uh, a formula of calculating return on investment for Edimon and the second is uh, make or buy. So on the return on investment, <coughs> excuse me, Return on investment is basically the question, how much money could I save assuming certain conditions? So you can basically just calculate the number of IDOCs you have on a weekday or on a monthly basis. Think about how many of those IDOCs are typically failing, what are the unique error types, and then assume maybe five to six minutes per IDOC potentially, and assuming an hourly rate of or a cost per year for an administrator of 50,000, which is probably fairly low. But we believe even with some very basic assumptions, um, you can save a lot of money by 
implementing automation and that's the argument we could use to um, argue for a tool implementing a tool like this and the second question is uh, make or buy so basically if you know idocs you probably see exactly what we are doing in the background we read the tables get the information and you could simply say i i can write that myself the question is do you want to write it yourself if it's already readily available on the market um, so it is a standard software we maintain it we update it we implement new features and it comes with all the features benefits and advantages of having a, a standard software best practices of implementation and so on and overall in pretty much every of my projects i give a money back guarantee so if you don't like it we can uh, refund the money or you can do a buy and try or try and buy i'm we are very open in terms of sales for any kind of a scenario so with that we're gonna have two more minutes or oh, one more summary i think you we talked enough about the benefits um it is um, maybe one more point up and running in as little as three days that's the last bullet point you see in the screen so the installation and setting up a couple of rules three days we recommend the training two days and potentially do the rollout to your users together another three to five days depending on how extensive you want to do it but you see this is not a project where, where we're going to be working on, on on an implementation for two or three months so let's open the Q&A session there are only uh, one question that came in and maybe there's going to be another question coming in but we are at the end of the hour so let's look at the uh, questions and uh, Puni, I need your help to answer this can we restrict the view inside the tool? How does security work in uh, in Edimon? Yes, Bern, and um, th that's the point which I showed um, in my um, the last uh, view of the uh, live demo, where we have two options. One is the subject area, which can be uh, uh, rule based or user based, where I can assign the IDOC type to a specific rule uh, role inside the SAP and or uh, I can assign the IDOC type to a specific user and another option is a blacklist option where I can uh, I can put all the IDOCs which are highly critical and uh, in a blacklist uh, list and then uh, that list uh, that particular IDOC is assigned to a specific role only that person who's having a specific role can edit the IDOC so the, these are the security uh, available currently in the ED mode. There's one more question that came in. Uh, can this tool send email alerts to a group of people in my team? Yes, that, there is a possibility to send an email alert to a group in the organization. Good, that was easy. So with that, I want to thank everybody for uh, joining the presentation today. If you have any questions, please uh, reach out to me, reach out to Puni at any time. And um, we hope you um, enjoyed the presentation and we look forward to, to hearing from you. With that, I'm going to go ahead and close the webinar and um, everybody having a good day. Thank you and bye-bye.